Today we're going to do hive inspections of these three hives, four, five, and six, and I'll also one, two, and three over there. At the left you can see my webcam that I've got set up that allows me to view the hives from anywhere in the world over the internet. We're going to take a look and see what sort of uh, progress the bees have made inside here, and then we're going to top off the sugar syrup feeders on top with syrup that I made up last night and also put some oil into the oil pans that are down below the hives that are designed to catch and kill the hive beetles, small hive beetles. You can see here that probably an armadillo has been digging around the back side of the hives looking for grubs and hopefully hasn't really been molesting the hives themselves. I don't think the armadillo would be too interested in getting stung, but who knows. Since the last episode I have removed the paper, combined the two groups of bees together, and they are now all inside one box. And this will be my first time to see whether that package took and whether they are now living together in peace and harmony with the new queen. So this is a pretty nasty mess up here. The bees are, there are a few bees coming up here to get some of this water, but good lord, that's pretty nasty. We got ants coming in here, getting the sugar water. So I'm going to dump all of that out and give them a whole new batch of sugar syrup. What I'm seeing here is not good at all. It looks like the cluster has dwindled back down to just a very small group of bees. So we've got half on that side, half on this side. It looks like the pollen patty is really keeping them from that section. So that's the extent of that hive. That's not very much. I'm pretty worried about this hive now because there should be bees all over at least half of the frames there. It's yeah, entirely sure possible that it. the bees that I combined into the the one hive have either drifted over into the other hives uh, or that they've left. More than likely they've drifted over into the adjacent hives just because they didn't like the environment here. Um, it's possible that uh, I actually lost the queen and didn't realize that she was missing completely and that when I added the new package they found there was no queen there and they just decided to drift over into the other hives. In any event I don't know what happened to them but they've dwindled down to a very small number. Okay here's the next hive, number five. still got some in it. Lots of bees crowded into the top there. Getting down, picking up sugar water. Let's see what it looks underneath. Looks like underneath there.
Unfortunately, the way these particular feeders are designed, they have a huge open space underneath that the bees just love to fill with wax and honey. Lots and lots of foam underneath there. All right, that's more like what you would want a hive to look like. So, It's really too bad that they build all of this comb underneath the feeder and then it gets attached to the tops of the frames and then gets ripped loose when I remove the feeder. It's a lot of effort that they go to to build that comb and to load it full of nectar, but we really can't tolerate having it on tops of the frames like that. This is a real mess. These frames are not sized properly for this box. And as a result, we've got frames falling down inside all over the place. I'm trying my best here to put the feeder back on in such a way that I don't kill any bees by smashing them. And the best way to do that is to slide the box. What this sugar syrup does in the springtime is to give the bees something that's easy for them to gather and use to make wax. They, in these first three new hives, they've got a lot of wax to build before they can start putting away brood and nectar and turning it into honey. So they consume a vast amount of, of nutrients to build that wax and the sugar syrup just helps them out. Almost empty. Got some bees collecting syrup there in the top. Let's see what it looks like in the bottom. The feeder is constructed with a screen so that the bees can come up from the bottom through a slot, but they can walk up and down the screen holding on to the screen as they venture down into the sugar syrup so that they don't have to go out into the middle of it and swim and drown. Okay, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, six frames going good. Once again, the pollen patty is really kind of preventing them from doing anything over here, so I'm going to get rid of that.
Once again, we got a bunch of burr comb. It's got nice nectar in it. Probably do anything with. Now all of this wax I'll set out and let the bees recover all of the nectar out of the wax. They'll take it back into their hives and then what will be left is just the bare wax which will be left behind in the bucket that I leave out in the bee yard and then I can recover that wax later and use it myself. up the burr comb a little bit. I'm going to dip out some of the dead bees here. I'm sure they're not particularly fond of drinking. Your cohorts. These bees should fill up the rest of the frames that looked rather empty within a few more weeks and then it'll be time to set another box on top and let them start filling up those frames as well and so the beehives grow upward as they fill up one box you add another box and so on. The hive was in pretty good shape. That's about the only inspection I'm going to be doing. I don't, I don't plan to go down into the lower boxes at all. Just wanted to see how the upper box was doing and whether they needed more space or not and top off the feeder, clean out some dead bees. In the last episode, you saw me putting this hive together 
It consists of one box of brood that was taken out of hive number one to calm it down. And in the meanwhile, I've been out here and I've put a second box on it that is an empty box and then the white feeder box on top of that. So today will be the first day that I'm checking to see whether the bees have worked their way up into the second box. That's pretty nasty. There's a few bees up there, not very many at all, collecting sugar water on this thing. Yucko. So, not a lot of activity going on up here in the top part. Down below, of course, we've got another whole box. And they're going pretty strong down in there. Frames that are in this box were taken from hive number one last year, late in the year, when I extracted some honey out and there was wax left on the frames and so I put those frames into this hive so that they would be able to start out with some existing drawn there's comb there's and not have to spend there. so much time building the comb foundation. So this is some of the comb that had already pre-existed. I'm not sure they're really liking it all that much. But... Anyway. Right, time to see what my strongest hive looks like. And this is the hive that in episode 18 I had to take apart because it had gotten so aggressive that I just couldn't even work it. I would take the cover off and they would just all attack me. So we're going to find out now whether this has calmed them down. That water is pretty clean. Not bad. There aren't too many bees up there collecting either. I put an empty box just below the feeder here so that they would have plenty of work to do to try to get foundation built in the empty box. So what we have here is uh, not too much activity. See this one frame here has got some comb on it. I just want to remind you what it looked like when I did this same thing in the last episode where I called this a mean hive. Take a look at the difference between what happened then and the way they are acting now in a very much more calm and docile fashion. <laughs> All right, I think my it. splitting the hive actually worked. <laughs> That's what that looks like. But Whole bunch. So down inside there it's going gangbusters. Up here not a whole lot going on.